Hello and welcome to the IELTS Success Summit and today in this video we're going to be looking at the best strategy for the multiple choice questions in the reading section. And quite often these are the most common uh, questions. They, they appear in almost every IELTS exam and often in the reading section they are the first type of section that you will first type of question that you'll see in the reading section. So it's important to be able to have a good strategy for these questions to get your reading section off to a good start. So here are some key tips before we get into the strategy for multiple choice. Again, they're often the first set of questions that you'll find in the reading section. Uh, the answers to these questions often come in order in the reading section. So once you've found the answer to one question, you keep moving forward in the passage to find the answers for the rest of the questions. And what you'll be looking for uh, in this type of question is you'll be looking for precise information. And as you're looking for precise information, you'll also have to be aware of the importance of recognizing synonyms for the words that are used in the questions and paraphrasing. So here, are, these are just some key tips to get you started. So let's talk about how we approach these questions. Before we even look at the passage, we look at the questions. And we look at the questions first, because by the time we've gone through these first set of questions, we'll already have a good idea of what the passage is about. And when we approach the passage for the first time, it won't seem like a stranger. We'll already have some familiarity with the passage. And the first thing we always do, and it's so important in every aspect of the IELTS exam, is we read the instructions because we want to make sure that we accomplish the task that we're asked to do. And in this case, the instructions are fairly simple, is to choose the correct letter and write it on the answer sheet. And in the reading section, uh, for example, compared to the listening section where you have time to transfer your answers to the answer sheet, in the reading section, you don't have this. So you answer your questions directly to the answer sheet. So make sure whenever you read the instructions that you always underline them. And this will just reinforce for you that you have read the instructions. You won't get halfway through a set of questions and then have a second guess or ask yourself, am I doing this correctly? By underlining and marking the instructions, even putting a check mark beside them, will just reinforce for you that you've taken this first important step. The next thing we want to do as we look at the questions is to apply our keyword strategy. Now, the keyword strategy is important in not only the reading section, but the listening section. And if you want a more detailed description of the keyword strategy, you can subscribe to my YouTube channel. And on that channel, you will find uh, a video specifically about uh, the keyword strategy. But let's just remind ourselves of what type of keywords we'll be looking for and want to mark in the questions. We'll always mark proper names. Uh, proper names of places and people are very important and can often help find and locate information quickly. Dates, times, and numbers, the same thing. They're very specific and uh, really help to locate the kind of information that you're looking for. Uh, unique and technical terms. Maybe these are words that you've never seen before. And it's important to recognize that in the reading section, you don't have to have any prior knowledge of the topic that you're dealing with. So you may come across some vocabulary and some unique terms that you've never seen before. 
And this is not a cause for panic or worry. These are not words that you even have to understand uh, as you approach the passage. But by underlining them and being aware of them, these unique terms, terms that are unique to the topic that you're approaching, are often very good sources of specific information. So if you if you see a word that you've never seen before, and it seems like it could be a technical or unique term, make sure you underline it. In the reading section, adjectives and adverbs are so important. Adjectives connected to nouns really narrow down the kind of information you're looking for. And different types of adjectives are very valuable. When you have not just descriptive adjectives, but comparative adjectives. Comparative adjectives are very important in the reading section. And also superlatives, things that are the best or the worst or the first. These kinds of adjectives are so important in identifying specific information. So as we go through the first set of questions, these are the kinds of words that we'll want to mark. And we'll also want to be aware that when we do finally skim the passage for the first time, we will be looking for synonyms of these words or paraphrases of different sets of words that we find in the questions. So let's take a look at a couple of the first two questions here in this sample that we're looking at, and we're going to underline the key words. So let's just uh, move ahead and look at first one, the global increase in greenhouse gases. So global increase, we're not just talking about any increase, a specific local increase, we're talking about a global increase. So that's why an adjective like that is so important, and greenhouse gases. And one other little tip to be look, look out for is often in the reading section, we'll have to identify the cause or the reason for something. So watch out for little words like attributed to, attributed to what? So we're looking for a cause or a reason for the global increase in greenhouse gases. As a, and as we move to the, the questions, we just want to identify these adjective and noun combinations that are so important. Industrial pollution, coal mining, reduced rainfall, trends in population and lifestyle. These will turn out to be important keywords. And we're going to keep moving through the questions. So we look at number two. And we're, this asks about greenhouse gases. But there's a certain type of greenhouse gases. We're always looking for clues and keywords that make it more specific and narrow down our options so that when we do look for the answer, it's easier to locate and know that we have the correct answer. And then we simply have different percentages. And again, uh, numbers are always important keywords in uh, when we're looking and identifying information. So then after we've looked at the questions and we've underlined the keywords in the questions, now we're going to look at the passage for the first time. And as we look at the passage for the first time, we are going to do some skimming. And skimming means that we look at every word, we read every word as quickly as possible. Now, we're not reading for understanding. We're not reading to remember everything after we've finished this, this IELTS exam. We only need to deal with this passage for the 20 minutes it takes us to do this section. And if we remember anything after that, it doesn't really, it doesn't really matter. We're, we're looking 
to identify key information. So we'll read every word as quickly as possible and underline the key, the key words. Now, I want to mention it's very important here that we only want to do this task once. We only want to skim the passage once. So as we when we approach the passage, even though we're only we've only looked at one set of questions, maybe five out of the 13 that we'll face on this passage, we want to skim the whole passage. And we're not even necessarily looking for the answers at this point. We just want to do a good job of skimming the whole passage and underlining the, the information that could be important for all the questions that we're going to face. And so we're going to make sure we use our keyword strategy. So we're looking for the same keywords as we looked for in the questions and any words that may be synonyms of those words, and we're also looking for any kind of keywords that may be important for a future set of questions in this passage. So we underline a few words. Now we have to be careful when it comes to skimming and underlining keywords. And this does take some practice and you'll discover the types of words and the way to mark that works best for you as you do practice. But let me just say this, you want to be careful that you don't mark too many words. If you mark too many words, you won't find the key specific information you're looking for. So be careful not to do too much marking. On the other hand, you also want to be careful to make sure you mark enough keywords. If you don't mark enough keywords, you also won't find what you're looking for. So it's important to find that balance, what works for you, and this comes with practice. So I've marked a few uh, keywords in this portion of the passage so that I can show you how to identify key information and deal with the questions that we've looked at. So for example, greenhouse gases is one that we saw in the questions so we're going to mark that and we were we were looking if you remember from a moment ago what are these ground greenhouse gases attributed to well a synonym for attributed to could be arise from and we're looking at things uh, for increases increased population another word for increase is improve like improve living strategies and we're also looking for changes in lifestyle. We have a number here, 5 billion, so we're going to underline it. Even if we don't think it applies to this specific set of questions we're working on in the first set of questions, but it may come it may be useful for a future set of questions. The United Nations. This is the the proper a proper name. So we're going to underline it even though it didn't appear in this first set of multiple choice questions. 21st century is a date or a time. So we want to make sure we underline that keyword. Eight and 14 billion. Again, we have a number and 90%. And so we're underlining the same keywords and other keywords that we know are important for our strategy in the reading section. And now we're ready. Once we've skimmed the whole passage, we're ready to start answering the questions. So our first question is the global, global increase in greenhouse gases has been attributed to, and we go through our options. We don't see anything here about industrial pollution. We don't see anything here about coal mining. We don't see anything here about rainfall. So this question we can quickly uh, answer as D. It's pretty clear. And it's because we've done a good job of, with our keywords that we've been able to identify this key information 
rather quickly. And we can see that we underlined increased population, improved living standards, which is and life and changes in lifestyle. So we see a couple of little synonyms, but the, uh, the information is very specific and clearly identified. So we know that uh, question D, uh, answer D is the correct answer. So if we had continued and we were and continued to skim the passage, this is just another portion of that same passage. But remember, we will have already skimmed it. We're not doing little portions at a time. We've already skimmed the whole passage. And now we're ready to answer the next question. And this one, we can find the, the answer quite quickly. Proportion of all greenhouse gases created by coal. So, even, so about the fourth line down, we can say coal's con total contribution to greenhouse gas. And this is a paraphrase for created by coal. And we follow along a little further to that keyword, that number keyword that we entered, and it's 18%. And so as we look at our options, again, it's quite clear that the answer is B, 18%. Now, this might seem easy. It's not necessarily easy. But with the right strategy, it's simple. And you can see by using the right keywords and identifying the key information, we can answer the questions very effectively and efficiently. And we're making the best use of our time. And it all goes back to being very clear on the, skimming the passage for just one time and identifying keywords. And I just want to add a little tip here about time management. If you were to simply divide 40 questions into one hour, it would seem clear, oh, you have a minute and a half to answer every question. And in the in the, the reading section, you get one point per question, and you want to just get as many correct as possible. So once you've taken six or seven minutes, maybe eight minutes, to do a good job skimming, that leaves you with about an average of one, just over one minute per question. But I want you to know that as you go through the, the reading passage, and as you answer more and more questions, as you go, as you keep going forward, it will take you less time to find the information you need because as you go through the passage, and this is called scanning. Scanning is what we do after we've skimmed, identified the information. Our scanning ability to find that key information will improve as we go through each set of questions because we're becoming more familiar with the passage. So we actually pick up speed as we go through the, the answers. And if you miss a question, the important thing is to not spend too much time looking for it. So for example, if you've spent one minute looking for a question, move forward, leave it alone, and move forward to the next question. You don't want to run out of time at the end because if you spend too much time looking for one question, it may end up missing two or three questions by the time you get to the end. What you Ideally, you'd like to have three or four minutes left over at the end, and that's when you can go back and look for the questions that you missed. Because remember, each question has the same value. Each question is worth one point, and you want to get as many correct as possible. So let's move on to question number three. And just a little tip here, current research, that's adjective noun combination, energy producing efficiency, another adjective noun combination, but there's a little word at the end of this phrase, a little word by. If we see this word by, 
It means that we're looking for an answer that tells us how. Remember at the, at the last question, at the end of the phrase, we saw attributed to. So we were looking for a cause or reason. When we see this little word by at the end of a phrase, now we know we're looking for how something happened. And so we've underlined that little word by, that little word that can be uh, so important in identifying the key information. And then we want to underline these verbs because verbs answer how. Burning it, developing, extracting, and recycling. And I can tell you ahead of time that these exact words may not be found in the passage, but synonyms for these words will probably be what you're looking for. And again, if you've done a good job of skimming the passage, these words will be clearly identified and easy to find. So here's just another portion of the passage that we've skimmed and we've marked with the key words, the worldwide coal industry, resources, and then we have these verbs that are the types of verbs that we're looking for. Researching, developing, and capturing. We have efficiencies, which is a, a different word form for efficient. Okay. Uh, improve dramatically. And we just have these, these key words, these combinations of nouns and adjectives that are going to be so important for answering the question. And so we take, we take a look at our question, current research, and we have burning, developing, and extracting and recycling. I want to add in here another strategy that can be very useful and it's very specific to uh, multiple choice questions. And this is a very important strategy when it comes to multiple choice and it's called the process of elimination. So this is simply where we, uh, particularly in questions that may be more challenging, what we want to really do is just eliminate the questions that are obviously incorrect. And that way, uh, we can, uh, once we've eliminated the ones that are obviously incorrect, it gives us an easier way to locate, uh, to choose the answers that, that uh, we maybe say are possible or, or not, uh, or that we haven't eliminated. So as I go through these questions, I'm going to look at, first of all, the A option. Burning it at a lower temperature. Well, I noticed that there's nothing in this this past part, this portion of the passage that talks about burning it at a lower temperature. So I'm going to uh, eliminate that. Developing new gasification techniques. Well, I do see that there is something about gasification techniques and development. So. I'm going to put a little question mark here because this one could possibly be correct. Um, does it say anything about extracting CO2? It does mention CO2 emissions, but it doesn't say anything about extracting. So I'm eliminating that. Recycling greenhouse gases. Well, there's nothing about recycling in this portion of the passage that we're looking at. So what I'm going to do is eliminate that. And it's clear to me that the answer to question number three is B. So I've used this, quickly used this process of elimination. And, and as you're practicing and preparing for the IELTS exam and these types of questions, I would encourage you to really practice this process of elimination. It can be a handy tool for the reading section. Okay, so I hope that you found this helpful. I will be uh, providing more videos in the future for more uh, 
more reading question types and i want you to look forward to that and so subscribe to the channel so that you can receive notifications and in the next uh, the next week or so the next couple of weeks i will be dealing with as many and creating videos for as many of the reading section questions as possible so that's something to look forward to and i look forward to helping you get the score you need on the alts exam because that is my mission and I look forward to seeing you in the next lesson to help you prepare for your IELTS exam. So all the best on your journey.